Hey everyone, this is Day Trader Rockstar, and this is the market radar and review for going into going into the last week of February, the beginning of March. Uh, typically, do these videos on Friday, so happy Bread, Friday to you. the lies are overbought. You'll hear some uh, comment or actually some things in the background there. Um, it's about to one o'clock now, a little past one o'clock, and the market has been spiking around. And earlier this week, as I broadcast live on Day Trading Radio. I, you know, I kind of put out the warning that, you know, the situation in Greece, the ongoing um, discussions and everything is going to play a major part in, you know, getting some whipsaw action in this market. We've been seeing a lot today. Just recently in this little spike here, we just seen, um, we just heard that Greek officials say it appears the Eurogroup has reached an accord. And then we had another uh, person come out saying there's no, uh, no one's been informed of any deal yet. And. It's, you know, this is what I exactly wanted to, you know, kind of discuss. YM Tradeometer overbought. You can hear the Tradeometer in the background. Happy to say the Tradeometer has been ticking off the levels really nice. Um, you have to uh, just take that and, you know, take that with a uh, understanding that news will push all these things around. So we have to be very, very careful right now. You can see we had the... Uh, right after the open, even on the NQ, we had a nice buy signal, and then we got a sell signal. We kind of drifted sideways. We're still getting us not much. Bread, going the lies are overbought. Got the YM here pointing down, meaning we're looking at a possible trade to the downside. Uh, more information on this could be found on the Tradeometer.com site. It's T R A D E O M E T E R dot com. Um, so. This is where we are right now, is this news. And we're also very close to taking out the highs. Now, a lot of people are expecting the highs to be taken. 2,100 is a big number above us. We've come up here, tested it multiple times. I discussed all week uh, my theory that, you know, we will get the uh, we'll get something settled on on Greece, but at the same time probably make new highs and there'll be a sell the news event. I mean, the market has been moving up here, and we've had these uh, discussions and you know, back and forth, the Greek exit, the Greek thing, but the market here continues Why to push up against the overbought. So with that said, the market is kind of pricing in, um, you know, maybe a positive uh, announcement here. So what would happen if this is confirmed and we actually take out the highs? Brett, the lies are overbought. I'm going to mute that for now. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's a good shot that we actually sell into that news. And, um, you know, that's where I would actually start looking at some hedges in this market and maybe even some short side positions. I did take a couple here recently. So we're looking at some shorts this week. We're going to have those out on the watch list. And right now, I just want to go over some things that have been working. Um, you know, there's not much else to go into uh, the ES here. Let's just take a look at the ES for a second or the SPX. We'll start off with S&P 500. The hourly here, um, something that's been, you know, the daily, first of all, the daily has been embedded up here. And when it does, um, when the stochastics get embedded on a index like this, it's a sign of strength. Even you know, once you start getting overbought here, um, and you don't turn back down, you kind of stay above this extreme level up here. You kind of push up here. the market here is just showing an uptrend. And it's very hard to time a very you, you know you have to use this. And you have to understand that is a very bullish signal. So right now we have that happening right here. We have this kind of embedded stochastic here starting to happen. So, you know, what we do now is just start to break it down on a, a, a shorter time frame. And this is actually quite nice because you get that little rotation on, on the 60. Every time the 60 pulls back, we get that nice bounce. And we've been able to really, cap, you know, capture some nice moves in the market. It's been a great month, great year. Um, you know, I don't think anything's going to change. We're gonna, you know, what we're doing here at Day Trading Radio is we've been, we've really established a methodology where we, um, we have the patience and discipline to wait for these certain setups. And when these setups set up, you know, you get alerted to them. We take the trades. We take them off. There's no there's no fear. There's no greed involved. Uh, the quality names, quality setups. And, you know, each week we put out the new watch list. And, then, you know, like I said, always there's always the opportunity to take shorts in this environment. But, you know, with the embedded stochastics, you know, with the strength here, we really want to see the market break down. Try to recover, but fail and start to see the, you know, instead of guessing where that short is. So, but I will take a shot if we actually do get that Greek news and we start to see maybe some kind of reversal candle play out on the uh, on the S&P. So we'll be watching that going into next week, possibly even today. Um, 
just a uh, you know a great market to trade. It feels good. You know, I, I like this. Uh, I like the environment here. The only thing I do not like is having the uh, you know the the Greek news affecting some of the uh, giving us some a little whipsaw action. But right now it looks like we are trying to get through that 2100. We go back to the uh, go back to the ES here. We're at 20. Well, 2096 on the on the um, S&P cash. We're at 2098, but we're looking at 2100 on the on the uh, on the futures here. We want to get it up to 20, a little bit above that. 2105, all the way up, you know, anywhere above that, and then see that news come out, and then see how the market reacts if we actually start pulling back from that that zone. All right, so let's take a look at what is working in this market, what we've been trading, you know, and this is important because I want to go back and take a look at some of these, uh, these charts and, um, you know, give you some freebies here. You know we're in a couple of really great ones here. Um, so just take a look at Nike for a second. This is Nike, and when we trade here, you know, we identify, you know, great, great patterns that line up with the certain signals, on, you know, the indicator signals and stuff. Um, I use stochastics. I, I look for uh, divergences between price and the momentum. And basically, you know, having all the pieces of the puzzle match up. And when they start to match up, that's where we get in. So understanding, you know, there's a better buy signal here. Hi, took a look. Now here. get down and give me 20. <laughs> give it to me hard and fast. You got to love that, right? That's our high tick alert. It's going to be embarrassing for someone that doesn't know what uh, that w that was, though. But that's something that keeps everyone uh, on, on their toes here at Day Trading Radio. When we're trading during the day, we get a high tick alert. We get up and we get down and do some push-ups here, and it kind of gets us off our chairs. And it gets us, uh, you know, kind of get a little physical activity there instead of s sitting in front of the uh, computer. So that's that little alert that tells us to get down and do some push-ups or do some sit-ups or whatever, you know, floats your boat there. <clears throat> And um, <clears throat> and doing this video live during the markets, well, you're going to hear some of those alerts. So we just had an ES alert here. I just had an ES alert on the um, on the tradeometer. Go back to the market a second and take a look at that. Nike, again, very interesting. You know, when you identify a pattern, we have you know all these things are called playbook plays. You know, a certain pattern and a certain um, setup on the stochastics and some other indicators that we use. When they all line up, it's called a playbook play, and I have those all defined, uh, you know, with video uh, educational videos how to how to set these up and stuff. So when we do look for these setups, you're going to notice, you know, most of the setups that we get into have that same look and feel to it. Um, there's about seven different setups I look for. You know, here's just a basic one, two, three channel, and understanding when you're overbought and oversold, oversold and overbought, you know. Go with the flow, you know, understand the momentum here's drifted. You have a trend line down here. You have a better shot of pushing back up. When you're crossing back over, you have a downside move. So it's very easy to see the directional trade. And it's, that's half the battle. Half the battle is being on the right side of the market and feeling good about your trade. You don't want to try to, you know, um, cherry pick a bottom or cherry pick a top. You know, it's so important to be in the right stock, um, quality names, understand why you're getting in it. So, you know, Nike is very interesting. We've been following Nike. It hasn't broken out of its channel yet, but most of the stocks that we've been trading like this have been great setups. Like, here's here's a semiconductor index. This is what we call lane divergence, and this is just a, a key indicator that we've been just crushing lately, just crushing the whole, the whole year because they've been setting up across the board. Um, even to the downside, when you start to see a lane divergence here to the downside, you have your short setups. When you see the lane divergence to the upside, you have your long setups. And now, at this point, it doesn't make sense to go long here. But our next setup here, you know, we have a, a couple uh, playbook plays that represent what happens after a channel breakout. What do we wait for? We wait for a rotation to give us a new pivot area and to give us a new channel. Um, right now, it's not a higher probability uh, setup for a long side. That would be down here, and that's what we kind of you know, concentrate on. We do have a couple of those setting up right now, you know, you know, the Cabela's, you know, you know, this is a very nice uh, setup right now going out, um, going into next week. And that, that'll be defined for you on the membership video and show you how to trade that. 
you know, even seeing some of the divergences here, and it was a little divergence I pointed out, not, to, you know, just probably an earnings miss or something, but it's funny to see how it did play out. When you start to see the momentum here drop off, the price make a little higher, and then that reversal, that tends to be really great. Happened to be, you probably kept some news here that dropped it down a little further, but <clears throat> you do start to see some of those uh, lane sell signals coming up, and, well, you know, they're going to be golden when they start to show up here. So, I, you know, as I do a lot of my scans, I notice a lot of uh, potential breakdowns here. I mean, there's, there's a lot of short setups. The market has been extremely strong, so it's, I consider those a little more risky. <clears throat> but whenever you have a failure uh, to rotate here, you know, we kind of cross back down. This tends to look like a little bearish sideways action, you know, pulling back into this channel line. You can adjust that channel line and make it right, right there. So we have a lot of stocks that are pushed up against the top channel lines the channels have been down these tend to break back down um, you know I could go back and show you some of my scans and just looking at the uh, the dailies here they've been extended you know it's the, the timing to start to run out here this is almost kind of a coiled up you can see even CBS here after earnings here starting to pull back you know some uh, some stocks are actually pulling back the utility stocks have pulled back and they could be setting up here we have McDonald's here kind of rolling over, big tra channel line. So, you know, it's it's kind of logical to see that we're kind of extended. Um, we're holding on to some uh, levels of resistance. In this case, we're channel lines, trend lines, and we're overbought, and we're kind of circling back down and pulling back. So, you know, if this market wanted to go into a, a little pullback mode here, there's definitely uh, some reasons behind it. Cores, you can see a lot of these here is just kind of rotating back. So... You have to take you know take this in consideration. Be very careful on that. Not get caught on the wrong side of the market. I tend to have a little more patience now to let things set up at least on the 60-minute time frame, and you know and that usually happens. Like the Duncan Group here pulling back on the 60, the uh, some things here. But again, when the daily here starts to roll over and you have more of a bias to the downside on the daily, the 60 gives us little bounces. I mean, you could attempt to trade those, but I love what we call a dual stochastic setup where we have a daily 60 setup where you have both of them headed in the right direction. MDRX was a setup that we've, uh, that we're in right now, currently in, and it's just a, uh, you know, kind of a nice channel breakout. You can see how the directional trade here on the daily uh, was pushing up, but we also took, you know, you know, identified this down here on that reversal and that was oversold on the daily and on the 60. So we knew that we were probably going to get a breakout of this channel. We have the breakout of the channel, and now it's going to new highs, and it looks really good. So these are, you know, again, and this is kind of under uh, a price level that I, I tend to deal with, but the name of the the company is pretty quality name, and there's also just uh, a beautiful way about the stock. We we track it, we, we, we break down the channels, we understand how a channel works and where that channel is going to come out of, so it's very easy to just let that set up and we get into that. So these... Again, just continue to watch uh, these videos. Better yet, you know, get on Day Trading Radio. Get the get the real setup sent to you. Watch it during the day. I know a lot of people don't have time, but the, the beauty of this is, you know, the HPS setups is that they're, the setups are usually swing trades, you know. If we get in on a low, low risk, you know, that's what I call high probability setups. There's a higher probability of gain and gain than actually taking the loss. And, you know, as you can see, and you go to the site and you see the record on the site, you know, it's just, we have a very established methodology, methodology, and we just have to wait for those setups just to come to us. So, all right, so we're just going to show you some of the, again, typical setups of day trading radio that I get into. And again, this was the Alexion Pharmaceuticals. We ended up taking this one off today. Got over five points on it. Um, but again, it was a uh, it was a decent setup. It had that recognizable pattern. We've started focusing on it uh, back here, and it had that nice retracement, held on to strength. And I think there was a an entry on this. We got in back, I think back here there was a it was something we liked back here. Um, that little flush down. It, it took a while, started moving back up, but we caught a good level on it. Just got a great trade off of this. Um, and it still looks kind of good as it breaks out of that channel. But again, the concept here is really to understand the the higher probability buy zones where we have a better shot of the market here moving back up. First of all, the recognizable pattern here is that falling channel. These tend to break to the upside, especially in a bigger pattern. You know, so we look at the overall big pattern. 
And then you see these downward channels, what we call this a one, two, three pattern, where we have three pivot areas, and then you could actually concentrate on the fourth and fifth, if you, depending on how far you go down on it. One, two, three, four. And that's once you start to consolidate inside of a channel like this and get oversold, that's really your trigger. And if you could look right there, that's really the, um, the, the trigger that really exploded this stock out, and we actually just took it off. So again, at this point, yeah, it still looks good. I continue to uh, monitor this with some of the members that are holding on to it. But the 60-minute time frame will be the first level that we look at because during that, during an hour, or actually during a daily grind up here, you know, just say from here up, you know, from here up where we have this nice move, sometimes you will get that consolidation. You know, so for example, this one pushed up to oversold to overbought. And we moved up here, consolidated, moved a little higher, higher. But during this move up, there's usually a time where that 60 minute here kind of, you know, settles in and pulls back. And, you know, that's exactly what happens here. We're getting a little extended on the, on the 60 here. And uh, just like back here on the 60, it got extended. We pulled back here on the 60. We pulled back, and then here on the 60, we pulled back into a flag. So we're back here on the 60, getting overextended. It makes total logical sense to take your profits here. At this point, if you don't take profits, even though we are breaking out and the daily looks good, you, the, the probabilities are not there. You know, lots of times you start to see, um, you know, greed start to take over, and then what happens? We start to flag out again. I'd rather have a flag out, have that daily set up for us, and get in on that 60 again. So. It's never, we're never out of setups. You know, the, the thing is, I have such a tremendous uh, watch list here that I, I rotate through. So when they set up, we can always get back in. But it has to be in our, in our you know, basically on our terms, our terms. <clears throat> Here's LUV, uh, Southwest Airlines. And again, one of the patterns we like to trade is the flag pattern. Even a flag is, you know, kind of just represents that bigger channel. We call this a wide flag because it has, you know, it has good pivot areas. Pivot areas are really where you could see a definite directional change in the, in the, in the price. It pulls back from minor trends, you know, and definitely has a, a where com compared to something that's very tight like this, it's very hard to establish that pivot area. So I like the wider flags here. We're able to do, and that uh, identify levels to get in on the lower channel lines and then of course the oversold levels which we took this trade into and we got a nice pop up into the trend line again this was a uh, stock that we got into i think uh you know right off of this lower level it was a, a divergence setup right here and we got the gap up we took profits into that gap up why because that 60 minute time frame came into play we we're also right at the over bought you know that trend line it makes a lot of sense to see us pull back from that level now as this is happening right now in the background i could actually the market here popping through that 2100 We've been waiting for this to happen but we're going to see this um see a little some stops being taken out here and then we're going to you know possibly see a reversal i want to see if we actually get any type of reversal today um now that we took out the highs and that this uh this accord has maybe come to a uh an agreement here so we'll, you know, this is kind of part of the theory I was looking for to see us new highs see the uh, the Greek news here to push the new highs and then actually to sell into it now is the selling gonna come today or is it gonna come Monday or Sunday evening we shall see um, but th we're definitely gonna be watching this really close um, for the next couple trading sessions here's a great study on IBM we traded this stock um, recently and this was also a, what we call a lane divergence where we see the momentum shift to before the price price making a little lower low stochastic is making a higher high giving us the trigger plus that reversal candlestick is one of the five indicators of the hps system and um, so when you have that oversold um, lane divergence a reversal candle recognizable pattern a quality name that is our trigger and then from that point on it was basically uh straight up here but as this is even moving up and you run into a little consolidation here this is a great example you know you can get out of here and then get back in what we do is we take it get our pop take profits and then start to study this or kind of follow because of the lane divergence you follow that on the 60 minute time frame and the 60 minute here it just as organized as anything else and you see that little pullback here see how that lane divergence here set up right here we had that higher high um, 
right there we crossed over and we started moving back up and then we had this little pullback here but this was really just kind of key because that pullback is always expected after that bounce you get a little pullback and that pullback could be just measured here it's so much cleaner right here look at that perfect pullback that perfect channel <clears throat> so you get back in it get oversold on the 60 the daily still positive and then that's the continuation move so you have two good trades here one off a of lane divergence one off of that just per textbook pullback in a 60 minute setup and now we what we do is we wait for the next setup you know it's a little extended here you got the embedded stochastic we look for some more upside and now it's starting to get a little choppy so the risk reward is no longer uh in our favor um but it's still looking looking good but it hit our profit potential and hit our targets <clears throat> other great stocks here <clears throat> You know, just again, you want to surround yourself with quality, you know. Um, PANW here really worked out well. Just came out of a, a real tight consolidation with a little di divergence. We call this a price stochastic divergence with the stochastics here pulling back, price here moving sideways. And then we pop and we pop both of them. Here's an old favorite we've been trading. Um, haven't traded it yet back. I mean, gotten back into it. But, you know, if you look at my charts during the show, most of them already have the previous lines that we've paid attention to. You know, I mark off the levels that when we're involved in these stocks, this is kind of a wedge pattern, kind of a coiled up wedge pattern breakout. And then we coiled up with another one, two, three pattern, but we flagged out, got oversold quickly on the daily, which is very bullish right here, into a flag. And that's a you know and then you have actually uh this underlying channel here so another time it sets up right there oversold so you have all these entries and all you have to do is wait for them take it that it doesn't happen every day and i think that's a big issue for traders and especially newer traders that come into there they want to trade every single day but they so they get into things that are not um you know perfect setup not an hps setup or they'll try to make something happen and that's how a lot of people do that. But that's, you know, that's living, living by the sword, dying by the sword. Um, <clears throat> you know, for me, I'd wait for another setup on this. And again, take that best setup, take that best setup, take that best setup, be a longer short. We just have to wait for it. So, you know, that's what we are right now. That's what I do here on Day Trading Radio. And we're going to just uh, probably end this video right now. Hopefully you got something out of that. I'm going to start the membership video now, which... Um, is going to have our stocks for the next week lined up and basically they're going to be the setups i'll give you i'll give you an example here uh we just recently got into a couple of really uh nice ones here let me um let's th throw out uh let's give you guys well there's so many good ones here well i'll give you guys cab cab is you know Something that we have the underlying channel line, we have a channel relate retracement, we have uh, just everything that looks good on this. It just look good. Right on that, what we call an X marks a spot. Now, don't want to jinx it, but you can see we tra track this stock a lot, you know. So these, these levels where I circle out and stuff are important levels that I call trade zones on. And if you could see each of them really interesting i also paid attention to down here when this was gapping down i said let's pay attention to this lower trend line it did pop back up it pulled back and i liked the retracement it seems to be holding up okay on the daily and that gives us that 60 minute kind of a little pullback we're holding right on that trend line i'd like to see this thing move off of this level and move on up so that's uh that's a type of a setup we're going to be seeing here but got a whole list here i'm going to get to that hope you enjoyed the video and have a great weekend happy chinese new year and I'll see you next week. And don't forget just to come by uh, daytradingradio.com. Sign up for a free month. And uh, let, the, let the profits start to roll in.